talking health right now and, yeah, coughs and sneezes spread diseases. But when is it a common cold and when is it influenza? Uh, now, it was interestingly, uh, we had record numbers of flu last year. Could that be the case for this upcoming season? Finding out now with Dr. Marilyn Rabbi Karam, consultant clinical immunologist, um, expert in all things allergy at the Saudi German Hospital here in Dubai. How are you feeling? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm so relieved. I feel fine. I'm a little bit congested, but my goodness, people are dropping like flies they right are. now. So we did see a big respiratory virus season last year. Dr. Marilyn, should we be worried about another difficult season 2023? Well, unfortunately, I think we should. Um, And the CDC actually um, is expecting the same as last year. Last year was the second most worst flu season um, that we've had. Whatever. Forever, yeah. Um, The worst one was in 2014 and 15 with a rate of like having for every 100,000 person, you have 10 in the hospital. So for last year, it was nine for every 100,000. And that's comparing like to one or two before the pandemic. Well, it's interesting to think about that pandemic piece, because when COVID was at its highest, flu was record lows because of obviously the measures we put in place in terms of hand washing, mask wearing, social distancing. Absolutely. That's one factor. But there's also a different factor involving the immune system as well. So um, during covid our immune system was not being exposed to these new viruses. The flu, the, the flu virus mutates every year. Like there's tiny little changes in the DNA and RNA structure. Um, so what happens if the immune system was away or on vacation for these two years and all of a sudden you're exposed again to these um, a bit more different viruses mm-hmm. um, and hence, you know, you're not used to fighting these viruses and this is why... Um, we're getting a bit more severe symptoms. Can we talk about what the flu is? Because I feel like the word's kind of lost a bit of meaning and is used quite interchangeably with having a bit of a heavy cold. Now, my dad is not a doctor. He's a quantity surveyor. Um, (laughs) But his test for us growing up, when we were like, I've got the flu, he would joke about putting a £10 note next to our bed. (laughs) And he's like, if it's a cold, you'll get up and get the money. If it's the flu, you couldn't care less. Oh, he's got a point right there. So so there's several different viruses that can give you the symptoms of flu, right? Which are fever, uh, body aches, um, congestion. Um, So the common colds include viruses like rhinovirus, adenoviruses, even the seasonal coronavirus, which is different than the COVID-19. Um, so common colds are usually milder. Um, you get lower fever, lower temperatures, um, and you don't get the severe myalgias, or which is basically the body aches. Um, but clinically, when you have a patient in your clinic, the symptoms can be very, very similar. Um, so that's why it's extremely important to test um, making the difference, you know, you need to make the difference between the common colds versus the more serious viruses such as the influenza, which is the flu, um, RSV, and the COVID-19. So when we're talking about treating flu, are we really, and much the same as COVID, are we really just treating the symptoms and what an individual might be struggling with? We are, but you see, see, we want to identify people who are at high risk of complication, um, such as elderly and and people younger than two years, pregnant ladies, um, people who have chronic um, conditions such as heart, kidney, liver diseases. So we do want to identify those because they are at risk of complications. So when we're treating really the in, the flu, we're just doing supportive care, mm-hmm. meaning just rest, um, increase your water intake, um, um, some you know acetaminophen or ibuprofen for your symptoms. Um, but there is also antivirals which we can give. Um, early on in the um, illness. So that's a very important point because the, we have a window to start this antiviral. Joining us in the studio, consultant, clinical immunologist and allergy expert, Dr. Marilyn Rabbi Karam from the Saudi German Hospital. Kelly's been in touch on 4001 saying, when should you take Tamiflu? So in what does it do and at what stage is it the most effective? So Tamiflu is the antiviral. um, And again, this is something that we usually give early on. So within the first 
48 to 72 hours. And it actually uh, shortens the duration of the symptoms and kind of just decreases its intensity. We usually give it to patients who are at high risk of complication, not just everyone. And I know the name is Tamiflu, but is it only effective influenza or could you take it for a heavy cold? Uh, No, we usually give it just for influenza. So here's my question to you. As an immunologist, when you start to feel a little bit under the weather and you know you've been around people, as I'm sure you are all the time, who are struggling with heavy head cold, maybe influenza, how do you start to supercharge your immune system? Or what are you doing on a daily, regular basis to make sure you're fighting fit? So obviously, you know, there is no magic pill for the immune system, unfortunately, but it's all about, you know, having a very healthy lifestyle and increasing your antioxidants in your diet. Um, And the most important thing when it comes to the flu is vaccination. So you do need to get those vaccines. Um, It does not so the, the the pushback that I get from patients sometimes, oh, I got the flu vaccine and I still got the flu. Well, it does not prevent the flu um, overall. It prevents the severe complicated flu. So you might still get sick, but you won't end up in the hospital when you get your um, vaccine. So who and when should we get the flu vaccine? We're September now. Um, are we on the kind of the, the cusp of getting down to the clinic? We are actually, and we're a bit late. So um, usually um, prior to the pandemic, the peak flu season was January, February. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why we had a bad season last year was the peak was in November. So um, we really need to get vaccinated early because it takes around five to six weeks for the vaccine to start working. So it's not like you get vaccinated and you're protected the next day. So the sooner the better. So we should all by now get our flu vaccines. When we're talking about kids in particular, maybe getting the flu vaccine for the first time, it's a little bit different, isn't it? Absolutely. So when it's um, everyone can get the flu vaccine six months onward, the first time is usually two doses. So you get it um, and separate it by a month. So you get your first shot and then a second shot in one month. Okay. What about reactions to that vaccine? Is is it possible that you can get a little bit of a, a microdose and feel a bit rubbish for a day or two? Absolutely, because, you know, what, what the vaccine's um, job is, is to stimulate your immune system and give you this inflammatory response. So when you do get those symptoms, it means that it's actually working. Um, so you might, it's not, you're not getting sick from the flu vaccine. You're not getting flu from the vaccine, but you're just getting the normal immune reaction. I just want to come back to the, that feeling when you're getting sick. And I was told by a functional medicine doctor a few years ago, and she's like, you need to take buffered vitamin C to what she called bowel tolerance, right. which was basically before your tummy gets upset. And then lots of elderberry syrup, all the fluids you're mentioning there. Anything else that you've got in your, in your kind of cupboard? We you go on. Well, not really. Oh, when you go there, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it's like you know. So you're opening really kind of worms when you're going in there and talking about function medicine and all that microbiota and the gut um, mm-hmm. flora. Um, there is lots of and lots of research going on there. Um, I'm sure at some point in the future where we're get, we'll get there, where we'll have a you know something to eat or something to take that may prevent infections. But not yet. In the meantime, though, common sensible practices of hand washing. Hand washing, distancing. You know, viruses um, get around by nasal secretions. So when you get in touch with large or small um, secretions, whether it's a sneeze or indirectly on surfaces. So just washing your hands, avoid touching your face when you're out. Um, And, you know, um, take your distance when someone is sick. You don't really have to visit that friend who's sick. So... Uh, leave something on the doorstep. Absolutely. Dr. Marilyn, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate your time, especially given how busy we are now as we come into flu season. You can find Dr. Marilyn Ravi Karam, consultant, clinical immunologist and allergy expert at the Saudi German Hospital here in Dubai. This content is for informational purposes only and does not intend to substitute professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. Studies have shown that if you change career, change path in your 30s and 40s, that it gives you a bit of a new lease on life. 